Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Tom Boley, Chief Market Strategist at EarningsBeats.com and this is Trading Places Live. It is Wednesday, December 2nd, 2020, and I am pre-recording this Trading Places Live for Thursday, December the 3rd. Uh, futures currently are mixed, uh, a little bit higher on the NASDAQ, but a little lower on both the Dow and the S&P 500. A uh, long way to go before tomorrow morning. We'll see what happens there, but there were some pretty good earnings that came out after the bell. And I'll talk about that in just a bit. In fact, let's go through that agenda for today. Start off with the daily market recap, as I always do. Talking technically, I want to go through a few industry groups within the technology and consumer discretionary sectors uh, that I think look pretty interesting and are worth noting. Uh, then I'm going to go into a new uh, segment called Trade It or Pass. Um, I'm going to pull up six different charts, and I'm just going to tell you whether or not I would trade them or whether I'd pass and give you my reasons. Then uh, go into the earnings spotlight. There are a number of companies that reported after the bell. We'll try to get through some of those. And then we'll wrap up the show with the three you must see. These are three of the worst performers on the S&P 500 today. And so we'll take a look at those charts and see uh, whether or not they're setting up for a, a potential um, short-term trade. All right, before I get into any of that, let's go over to earningsbeats.com quickly. Just wanted to uh, point out, if you're new to the show, you can subscribe to our free Earnings Beats Digest newsletter, which is published Mondays, Wednesdays, and Friday mornings before the open. Um, mostly, they just focus on relative strength, earnings, uh, some um, trade candidates, if you like to trade in the short term. Uh, I think that there are a number of those that are mentioned from time to time. There's no cost. Again, this is free. No credit card required. Uh, you can unsubscribe at any time, but it is a way for us to give back to our community. And so all it requires is just your name and uh, email address. Hit that subscribe button. Then you can check, check out some of our um, portfolios. So we do have four portfolios at Earnings Beats that we uh, really just want to demonstrate how we use leading stocks and leading industry groups. Uh, each of those portfolios has 10 equal weighted leading stocks in the market. And uh, we've been tracking them now for a little over two years in terms of the model portfolio. The others uh, have not uh, been around quite as long, but we're into our ninth quarter now of the model portfolio. We've outperformed seven out of eight quarters. So far outperforming, outperforming again this quarter. Um, if you're a Stock Charts member and you'd like to uh, download all of the stocks in our portfolios are, we have a chart list set up for each one of these portfolios. You can download it right into your account, uh, but you will need to at least become a trial member at uh, Earnings Beat. So click on that join today button. There's a $7 30 day trial, but it is fully refundable. We'll give you the seven bucks back. So it's a no cost trial. All right, let's move on to the action from uh Wednesday. So this is the daily market recap. You can see Dow Jones Industrial Average up about 60 points, still hovering just below the 30,000 level. We have gone up above 30,000, so pulling back a little bit. But I think the probably the key that I would take away at this point is that we continue to trade above that rising 20-day moving average. So it certainly gives it the feel like we want to go higher. And we're like that across all of our major indices, trading above the rising 20-day which is above the 50 day and all of our daily PPOs are rising, moving to new highs. So I think all of this is very bullish for the market and I expect we're gonna see higher prices. Uh, but we did see the Dow on Wednesday up 60 points, the S&P finished up six, NASDAQ was down five, mid caps down two and small caps up five. So a little bit of a uh, mixture, um, but um, you know, call it bifurcated, I guess, a little bifurcated action but not a whole lot of movement in any of the indices in one direction or the other. As far as the sectors go, energy led the action on Wednesday, gaining more than 3%. It was up more than that earlier. Um, it's got a tall task to get back up through that late November high, which was up at about 40 and a half or so. Uh, we did finish at 38.13 on Wednesday, but again, we do have a couple more dollars to go to try to get ab above that prior high. Watch the rising 20 day moving average. Financials, XLF, also had a strong day, gaining more than 1%. We did see the 10-year Treasury yield rise, uh, tacking on some more um, in terms of the yield. 
relative to uh, what we had been seeing. Remember, we were pulling back. I'll show you that chart in just a couple of minutes. But the yield had been pulling back last couple of days. We've bounced again, and that certainly is giving a little bit of uh, impetus here to the financials to move higher. Materials uh, on a relative basis lagged on Wednesday. This was the worst performer, down about one and a quarter percent. Uh, one thing I've noticed that even though the price keeps going higher, notice the AD line keeps going lower. Uh, that's a little bit of a concern. We don't really see that with the other um, industry, or excuse me, the other sectors. Financials had been weak before and so had energy, but some of the uh, stronger groups certainly have uh, better AD lines than uh, what we see on the materials. As far as in, uh, the industries go, coal up 6.4%. And bouncing off that rising 20-day moving average, this is a group that's been under a lot of pressure since back in mid-September. It is starting to reverse back to the upside, which is good. I want to make sure we continue to hold that rising 20-day, though. Renewable energy, I'm going to talk about this one in just a minute, but it was down again. I think for the second straight day, it was the worst performing industry group, but it was coming after we saw tremendous strength. So I just think we're seeing some profit taking, which is to be expected there. 10-year Treasury yield, uh, this is what I was talking about. We had been moving down for a couple of weeks, and these last couple of days, couple of days we've seen the 10-year uh, Treasury yield pick back up again, trying to break out above that uh, November high from the second week in November, and also above the high that was about 0.96% back in early June. So this is a key area of resistance. I think we're going to break above it. I think we're going to make a run above 1% here fairly soon. And uh, I think that will help uh, some of the financials, which had out or excuse me, which had underperformed throughout much of 2020. We're starting to see a little bit more relative strength there. And that could continue if I am right. And we see that 10 year treasury yield breakout. Uh, on Thursday morning, we will get a couple of uh, economic reports out. Of course, every Thursday morning, we get the initial jobless claims. Markets expecting 780,000. Last week was 778,000. I think this is why uh, the, the Fed would like to see Congress act on stimulus. We just can't seem to uh, you know, move much lower in terms of these initial jobless claims than uh, just a little below that 800,000 level. So uh, as we stagnate here, I think it is pretty important that, the, uh, that Congress uh, see if we can get something passed there and, and help out some of these small businesses. November PMI composite, uh, the expectation 57.9. October was 56.9, so we're looking for a little improvement there. Um, no, November ISM services index, 56.0. October was 56.6, so maybe a little bit of uh, cooling down in the ISM services number for November. At least that's the expectation. Moving on to talking technically, I mentioned renewable energy earlier. And I want to just show you this. I'm going to shorten this chart a little bit so that you can maybe uh, see this test a little bit clearer. Um, and now I'll, go, I'll annotate this. But if you take a look at where we broke out from, here was that gap up. And that was with the vaccine news. Went up to about the 210 level, pulled right back to the 20-day, and then broke out above that 210 level. Well, the low was 213 and change. We got pretty close to that area. And, you know, we probably could move that up just a little bit. It's probably closer to 212, something like that. But anyway, we pulled back to about 213, very close to that rising 20-day EMA, and then we bounced. And that's what I would have expected, uh, at least initially, would be to bounce there. That PPO on the most recent high, you can see, took out the previous highs in the PPO. So I would expect the rising 20-day to continue to hold. I think if we break below about 210, on renewable energy, then we might have to reevaluate. But until then, I would be buying this weakness. All right, let's move on to software. So with software, looking at this chart, now I see a move up and I see maybe not quite equal highs, but close to equal highs, rising lows. This has a little bit of a look of a, an ascending triangle. Um, ultimately, what the group wants to do is to break out above that September high at 44.50. In the meantime, until it does that, it's consolidating. So what happens when groups consolidate while the S&P 500 goes higher? 
the groups underperform on a relative basis. And that's what we've been seeing with software. I would not write this group off. I think when we do get the breakout above 4450, I think we'll move again. The only question is, will that happen in December? December historically is not a great month for software and for technology in general. So I think it'll probably not happen until January, but I do expect as we start making a pre-earnings run in January, I think software will be a part of that run. Next up, uh, computer hardware. So this is the home of Apple. Um, we are starting to strengthen here nicely, which is good. Uh, we've still got some overhead resistance like software. We've still got to get through that September high. So this consolidation has been hurting computer hardware on a relative basis, but we are actually trending higher and we're above the rising 20, which is above the rising 50. PPO coming off the center line. I would begin to treat this like an uptrend. And the only reason I would maybe, um, you know, maybe go in a different direction and maybe look for more consolidation is if we fail to hold the rising 20. So watch that on computer hardware. In the computer, excuse me, in the consumer discretionary area, I wanted to point out clothing and accessories. Um, you can see the beautiful move up here, uh, breaking out above these prior highs. PPO looks strong. Any kind of a pullback to test that rising 20 day, I think would be a great opportunity to enter into that group. And then the last one I had for you is travel and tourism. This is one of my favorite groups. This is a group that's really begun to show a lot of relative strength. You can see the gap up here on November 9th. That was with the vaccine news. Another gap up on the 16th with, with vaccine news. And now we're getting continuation with volume picking up again. So I, I really like what's going on here with the um, travel and tourism group. Any kind of a pullback, I think, could lead to some opportunities in this space. All right, uh, I'm going to move on to a new segment. And this is called Trade It or Pass. So I'm going to bring up six charts and just tell you whether or not I see a trade on, on that particular chart or whether I would pass. And so the first one I'm going to look at is X-Ray, which is Dent Supply International. And when I first looked at this chart, I was thinking, OK, look at this bouncing off the 20-day, coming up, breaking out. That's all pretty good news. So my initial thought was, yeah, this is a, you know, probably going to be a, a decent trade. Well, I changed my mind. And I changed my mind mostly because this is a stock that it was setting a 52-week relative low to the medical supplies group less than a month ago. I mean, we've come off of that a little bit, a little bit of a bounce. But we've seen these bounces before. I mean, we saw it back in March and April. We saw it again in May, June. Saw a little bit back here, July, August. Um, so I'm not going to get overly excited by this. Medical supplies has been going up for quite a while. And on a relative basis, medical supplies has been outperforming really since the beginning of September. Ever since the market topped, we've seen rotation into medical supplies. And throughout much of that, X-ray was moving to a new 52-week relative low to its peers. So it's starting to show a little bit more positive signs. I'll give it that. Nice AD line. Volume trends starting to turn a little bit more bullish. Uh, we are you know, breaking out here. But we had a pretty solid high here on the 9th at about 55 bucks. I wouldn't be surprised to see some selling coming in there. I think you're going to have a chance to get in a little cheaper here. So I'm going to pass on X-ray. Next one, would I trade it or would I pass? Ring Central, RNG. Um, I would absolutely trade this one. This is a stock that uh, I sent out in our daily market report today to our earningsbeats.com members. Um, I really like stocks that go through a long extended period of consolidation. And if I annotate this, I think it's pretty clear that we have struggled up at around the 312 area. And to the downside, I think we've done a pretty good job of holding right at about 250. And you can see those were prior highs. We broke out and then came down. And every time we got to 250, it was a buy. And every time we got up to about 300 to 310, 312, it was a sell until today. We got that breakout. You can see the volume picked up. 
uh, AD line breaks out. It is showing, uh, it looks to me like this slight downtrend versus the S&P 500 broke back to the upside. So I actually think that we're going to see some outperformance here by Ring Central going forward. It checks off a lot of the boxes for me. So I would be okay trading it. Now, could it pull back? Sure, it could pull back. Um, I'd be watching the breakout level, 312. You got the rising 20-day EMA, which is at 293. That's a full 10% below where we're trading right now. So it certainly could pull back. Uh, but I think in time, and I'm talking about the next several weeks, I look for this stock to be much higher. All right, SPR. Is that a, would I trade it or would I pass? This is in the aerospace area. All right, uh, we've got moving up here off of the late October low is the accumulation distribution. It's been in a downtrend, but starting to turn back up. Volumes picked up on this break back to the upside. Starting to see some relative strength here. Uh, there's the break to the upside in aerospace, but here's the relative strength of stock versus aerospace. And aerospace relative to the S&P 500 has moved up to about a five month relative high. So we look at this and definitely we've got improvements here, but I'm gonna pass on this one. I, I would not trade it at this point. Um, I do like a lot of the things taking place. I can tell you that aerospace likes the month of J January and February, those two months. So I might be tempted to wait a little bit and I'm gonna just draw you here a line where we gap down on increasing volume back in March. And when we came back up late March, couldn't get through about 38 bucks, got close again in June, couldn't do it. And now here we are again, 37.50. So I think we've still got some overhead resistance to clear. Things are improving, but I'm not ready to uh, get too excited just yet on Spirit Aero Systems. So I'm gonna pass on this one. Uh, next up, salesforce.com. Um, I mentioned this one on the air yesterday over at Earnings Beats in the morning. I looked at their earnings report, stock was gapping down and I said, watch gap support. Uh, gap support is around 216 and change, 216.05. Stock went down to 215.63, literally almost right to that gap support level, and then turned around and closed at 220. I actually bought it at gap support. We'll see uh, whether or not that turns out to be a good trade or not. But in the short term, I like it down here. I think that uh, salesforce.com has been, well, you can see here with this move up, let me get rid of the inspect button there. With this move up right here at the end of August, early September, Notice the relative strength in the stock. It was at a 52 week high relative to software. It has come back down a little bit and especially here in the last few days on increasing volume, but there's nothing more important to me than a price support level, gap support. And so I think we're hitting that. To me, that trumps the recent weakness. I think we're gonna move higher, but I would probably look at, um, let me annotate here. I would look at two key areas of support, one being that gap support right there I just talked about, and the other would be on the most recent breakout, which was at about 208, 209, um, right in here, maybe even 210. But I think that two, 209 to 216 area is where I wanna see this reverse. I wanna see it hold. Maybe we gap down one more time tomorrow. Maybe we print a bullish engulfing candle or something. Maybe we even have an intraday move down below the 210 level and then come back up late in the day. That would be a really bullish type of a candle that I'd be looking for because that would be the signs of accumulation. If it breaks below 210, I think you're gonna see the volume really pick up. And the difference between a breakdown and a bottom is that reversing candle. If you get a reversing candle at a key support level, a lot of times that's a sign market makers have accumulated. So watch for that tomorrow. So I actually, I like this one. I actually bought it. So uh, full disclosure, I own CRM right now. All right, uh, fifth one up. I got two more. Fifth one is Goldman Sachs. So Goldman Sachs uh, looks like it's trending above its 20, which is above its 50. If you look back the last several months, it's been going sideways, not really any trend in play. 
moving averages haven't done anything. They've been going sideways. They're not holding a support, not holding or not uh, providing resistance. That's changed. So that's in the positive column. That's in the bullish column for Goldman Sachs. I do think we're trending higher now in Goldman Sachs. I'm going to pass on it, though. And the reason I'm going to pass on it is it has been going down relative to investment services for the past five or six months. If you look at every one of these highs coming across here, Goldman Sachs on a relative basis has been going to a lower level. So it's just not one of the better stocks in the group. The group's been performing great. Goldman Sachs is going up, but it's a rising tide lifts all boats kind of an environment. I would be careful with Goldman Sachs. I think, honestly, if I was going to look, and I haven't looked the last couple of days, but I think uh, Morgan Stanley is the better bet. We've been moving higher here and check out the relative strength. Morgan Stanley relative to investment services at a 52 week high, that's the difference. So I like what's going on on a relative basis much more with Morgan Stanley. So Goldman Sachs, I pass. Last one I'm gonna come up with here is TTGT, which is tech target. Okay, so when I look at TTGT, I'm gonna go ahead and annotate this area right here. So this was the gap that occurred back at the beginning of November. You can see the heavy volume come in. We gapped up from roughly 45 to about 49 and a half, 50 dollars, something like that, and then continued running up to about 58. We've now pulled back a couple of times, but you can see the top of gap support has been holding, and that's where I would like to see that continue. I think that um, uh, you know we'll, we're more likely than not to see that level hold rather than to go all the way back down to the bottom of gap support. And I'm not saying that's a guarantee. I'm just saying in my experience trading, I would be looking for TTGT to hold right at about that 50 area. So 49, 50, 51, this range I think is pretty good entry into the stock, looking for ultimately a move back up to about 57 and a half to 58. All right, uh, I'm going to go ahead and move on now into earnings. Uh, there were some earnings after the bell tonight that I wanted to go through. I'm going to start off with a couple getting really nice uh, reactions. So let me go ahead and pull up the first one, which is CrowdStrike. So CrowdStrike, when you look at it and you know going into earnings, I look to see is a stock leading or is it, um, you know, has it been a, a real laggard? And CrowdStrike's been a leader. Uh, I think when you look at the relative strength of CrowdStrike relative to software, it's been very strong. Relative to the S&P, it's been very strong. It's been moving higher. So I think we've got a pretty good stock here. And after the bell, they came out, their earnings were eight cents. The market was expecting flat earnings. And the stock gap has gapped up. Uh, well, hasn't gapped up yet. It'll be gapping up. Uh, but based on after hours action, it looks like it's gonna move higher to the tune of about 12%. So we're talking about, you know, I don't know, $16. Um, so maybe $157, we could be very close to making a breakout. And in fact, the number I would be watching for is the highest of these. So let's see, 152.04, 153.60, 154.55. I would be watching 154.55 on the open tomorrow. If it opens above that, I think that's a good sign that the stock goes higher. We might have an initial pullback, but I believe that is a good sign that the, the stock is going to move higher. If we open below 154.55, I think we could be in for more consolidation. And I would especially be careful if it opens below 154.55, moves through that number and maybe goes up to 160 intraday and then comes back down and closes below 154.55. Uh, that could leave a a tail and a false breakout. And so I'd be a little bit more concerned about that. Uh, next up, Zscaler. Really nice uh, move here on Zscaler after hours. Stock is up over 11% in after hours trading. Um, so this one also looks like it's probably going to make that breakout. But just like on um, just like on CrowdStrike, I would watch the high, which here is 162.99. Do we close, or excuse me, do we open above that 162.99 level? I would watch it and do the exact same thing with that as I just talked about with CrowdStrike. But uh, Zscaler, 14 cent profit versus six cent estimate. 
Um, another one that uh, reported pretty strong was Okta, OKTA. <clears throat> So looking here, Okta, 8%. Um, so we're talking about, I don't know, maybe about $18, 248. This one also is going to be very close to that breakout level. Uh, so I would look again, just like I, the last two stocks, to see whether or not we can clear candle bodies, not intraday highs, but candle bodies, either the open or the close, whichever is the highest back here in the middle of October. Let's see if we can get through that on the open. I think that will give us a little bit of a clue in the short term. And uh, the last one I'll mention is ESTC. And this is Elastic, uh, also up 8% um, in after hours. Expected to have a loss of 20 cents. The loss was only 3 cents. So uh, moving up, that would be probably about a $10 advance, which takes it up to around 130. Another one that looks like it's going to try to break out at the open tomorrow. This could be a really good day for the market, uh, at least for some of these tech stocks, based on the way they were trading after hours. We'll see. Um, as far as the disappointments, Splunk was definitely the, the big disappointment of the evening. They came in with a loss of $0.07. Cents. The market was expecting a gain of $0.10. Cents. They were looking for profit. And when I look at the stock, it had topped on a relative basis all the way back in August. So it's been downtrending on a relative basis to both software and the S&P 500 for the last few months. Maybe this was the reason why. Stock's down 18% after hours. So it looks like it'll get off to a rough start tomorrow. All right, uh, let's keep moving on. I'm gonna move into the three you must see. I'm gonna start off with Whirlpool. Um, Whirlpool, I think actually looks kind of interesting to me. It was at a 52 week relative high to its peers back in, at the end of October, but we've been going through all this consolidation and we've backed off a little bit. I think though this breakout area and the double bottom at around 178 to 180, I would look for that to hold. And if on an intraday basis, we see a tail go below that, but then we come back up and close above it, that to me could signal a reversal on Whirlpool. Next up, GPC. This is Genuine Parts. Another stock had a rough day today. And these, as I mentioned earlier in the show, Whirlpool, Genuine Parts, and the third one I'll give you in a minute. These three stocks were three of the worst performers on the S&P 500. Now, Genuine Parts has been a, an awful performer versus Auto Parts. Auto Parts has been good but this has not been a great relative performer. So I would not take any chances until I at least see a breakout above that 105 level. Um, I would suspect that it's going to break out just because I'm very bullish about the overall market, but we might see a pullback back into the low to mid nineties here before we, uh, we get that breakout. So I'd be a little bit more cautious here. And then the last one I have for you is ROL, which is Rollins and Rollins on a relative basis was actually at a 52 week high or pretty close to one back at the end of October on this high. And yes, it's been pulling back, uh, which is a little concerning, but overall, I think it's relative strength has been good. It's pulled back in, rel in terms of relative strength during the consolidation, but overall, I think this one's done pretty well. So I'd like to see get back up above that 20 day moving average though. Until then, I'd be a little cautious. All right, that's it for today. Appreciate everybody tuning in. Uh, I will be back next Monday at Earnings Beats for your next Trading Places Live. Have a great rest of your week and weekend. I'll see you then. Happy trading. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.